nations. And Saucedo, who's a former junior welterweight title challenger. Significant fight. They wanted each other. They get it. And right away, stepping to him is Saucedo. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Mar Barboza coming out in the southpaw stance. Normally comes out in the orthodox stance. Huh. Interesting. Interesting take for the first round at the moment. Sato's last fight was here in the bubble. It was June 30th at the 10-round unanimous decision win against Sonny Fredrickson. Of course, those who have watched him closely in his career best remember for his war with Lenny Z. That fourth round was voted round of the year. All action. Barboza's in some serious trouble right now. You don't see it. I see it at the moment. You know, Salcedo's marching forward with me. You know, Salcedo's marching forward, landing some hard shots right now. Coming behind the jab, and he landed a nice right hand just a second ago. I don't understand the southpaw, Dre. What, what, what is he doing? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure what the game plan is with, with you know, he and his team. But what? I, w I will say this. Barboza is the far superior boxer of the two. A lot more skill, a lot more ability. He, he's pretty much got every category in his favor. The only thing he hasn't shown yet is does he have that bite down? Does he have that grip? Oh, left hook from Saucedo. Shot right there. He got hit with a shot. I'm, I'm, I'm does, he, does he have that grip when he gets into a tough spot? And he's going to because Saucedo may not have the ability and the skill, but he's extremely tough and he's got a strong, strong wish. That southpaw stance, Barboza tries to land a left. Or an orthodox stance, but tries to land a left hook. Barboza needs to stop switching. He needs to stay in the orthodox stance, and he can land combinations like that against Salcedo. It's exactly what we expected early on. Good pace, good action. Sometimes young fighters, and he's been a pro for a while. I mean, young fighter like this is his first big fight. They try to overthink it. They think they got to be seven different things instead of being who they are and just being great at that. Got blood from the nose of Alex Saucedo. And there's a left hand that comes in from the undefeated Barboza. Saucedo is a bleeder. He cuts a lot. He's been, you know, his nose bleeds a lot, but that doesn't detour him. He keeps nope. pressing forward. <laughs> Man, both guys are landing some, some leather. Forget a fill out round. These boys are here to do damage. And there was a right hand that came in. End of one. Good stuff here in Vegas. Goodness. That's on Saucedo. There was also a left hand that landed in that first round. A first round that saw Barboza throw 95 punches. He was 21 of 95. Saucedo threw 82 punches. He was 22 of 82. Great stuff. Exactly what we expected with this stylistic matchup. I just don't like the stance. There it is. Left hook. hand from Saucedo. The left hook lands again. We don't talk about the left hook when you're facing the southpaw. That's a dangerous shot. And you know, Barboza, he's not that stable in the southpaw stance. Like he is in the orthodox stance. Yeah, I'm with you, Tim. I, I don't understand that. I think he's, he's got plenty of skill, plenty of everything from the right-handed stance. Why complicate this thing when you're dealing with a guy like this? Get into your right-handed rhythm, don't who's working the corner of Alex Salcedo. He said, look, the issue with the nose, it always leads. We're used to that. He's used to fighting through it. It's not going to be an issue. And it happens in round one. He is well conditioned to overcoming adversity in fights. Former title challenger, 30 wins framed against the one loss when he challenged back in 2018 Maurice Hooker for the WBO junior welterweight title. He lost that with a seventh round TKO. Snapping that jab out there. Three-punch combination from Barboza. Now you see Barboza starting to settle down and look like his normal self under his feet, using his jab and throwing crispy, straight right hands. Right uppercut thrown by Barboza. Trying to get the sweeping left hand to the body. Saucedo inching towards that pocket. 
Oh, that's snapping that jab there, that's Barboza. The can he set up off of it, Dre? He can do it, but he's got he's got to get a rhythm with that. He's got to build up some some rounds. Good right hand on the right hand. Came you in. See my hands up. I'm saying like, why are you switching southpaw? What are you doing? Look at this in fighting here in round two. Good stuff between these two. And while Barboza's trying to figure out what stance he wants to be in, Salcedo pressing forward and punching. Remember, at the end of this fight, it is the world championship for all the belts. Lomachenko against the power of Tiafimo Lopez. <laughs> Barbosa's last fight was here in the Vegas bubble. That was August 30th. A unanimous decision win against Tony Lewis. Absolutely dominated. Switch stances that night, too. Looked very sharp. It was 99-90 on all three judges' scorecards. Mm. It's interesting, in that fight, he also bloodied his opponent's nose. Barboza is extremely action of punches. He's facing the best competition he's ever fought. He's under more pressure than he's ever been under. But when you're facing a guy like Salcedo, who you know cuts and bruises up, just let the shots go. Don't load up. Just let the shots go, and hopefully you'll start to open the cut up. A little bit of separation. Tried to put that left hook in there. Now on the inside, Salcedo going to the body with the left hook, and it's Barboza who's able to split the guard. The infighting has been good early on. There's a short right hand from Barboza. Nice shot. I'm letting you know right now, Barboza is fighting a courageous fight right now. Both fighters are. But particularly Barboza, he typically doesn't fight this way. He's exchanging with the puncher. That is very, very dangerous. You can see when he's outside, he uses jab and he's throwing his combinations out at distance. It's easy because Salcedo doesn't have a great defense. But when he stands there, my fence. But when he stands there, my goodness, he's playing Russian roulette. Digging to the body for the past 20 seconds is Barboza. Of course, Saucedo very comfortable, willing to exchange and punch between punches. This is just who he is. Round number three here. What a start to this co-feature. At the end of this fight, we will have Loma and Lopez. Remember, it is right here on ESPN. No switching over to a pay-per-view format. These megastars are fighting on ESPN tonight, and what a treat for the fans. And what a good thing for the sport. And you're going to see more and more of that in the coming months of the biggest and best fighting right here on ESPN, not pay-per-view. Tess, this fight could boil down to a battle of attrition. Both these guys are throwing a lot of leather. An advantage for you? Yeah, I think it's a big advantage having been here before and performed well here in this ring, in this ring and I love it over here in Las Vegas. This is my second home now and looking to put on a great performance and, and walk home with uh, three belts around my waist. A lot of guys are beaten before they step into the ring. Looks like you're pretty confident that you have the formula to beat the monster. Yeah, I am. I'm very confident. I think this is my destiny and uh, I believe I've got what it takes to beat him and uh, this is my opportunity to prove it. His twin brother is a monster, whether the monster versus the monster, but nonetheless, it's going to be a great night of boxing on Halloween here on Top Rank Boxing on ESPN, Joe. Sure is, Bernardo. Good visit with Jason Maloney. He will be taking on the monster, the U.S. debut of the bantamweight champion, one of the most exciting fighters in the world, has signed with Top Rank and is coming to fight stateside. That happens Halloween night. Here we are a minute into round four. In that last round, Arnold Barboza upped the pace, Tim. He threw 110 punches a punch against Saucedo. My goodness. It's a heck of a work rate for these two athletes. You know, I wonder how they're going to be <laughs> towards the back end of this fight. Saucedo's got to be disciplined to come behind his jab as he throws com combinations because he's facing a, you know, a quicker foot, quicker handed fighter in Barboza and he's going to keep getting hit on the way in if he doesn't. Barboza seems to be getting in a nice groove right now. Those body shots. Barboza's landing has gotten Salcedo's attention and has slowed his work rate down. Salcedo has to return the favor and also hit Barboza to the body just like that. That was a good combination right there that included Barboza to the body just like that. That was a good combination right there that included two body shots. 
Just look at the hand placement of Salcedo. He's protecting his body. Those body shots are definitely <laughs> affecting him. <laughs> he don't care about getting hit in the face. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of weather flying between these two, isn't there? And the word that Barboza used in the build-up to this fight was respect. Who said this is what I want? Is respect from Salcedo in the boxing world. And right now, he's getting it. A little bit of swelling under the left eye of Barboza as he comes in with the left hand again and then pushes off with the shoulder. Honestly, oh, good right hand for Barboza. And he tries to go with the left hook to the body. It's the kind of fight that Saucedo often invites, isn't it? This is good stuff. Good action here before we get to the big one. Percentage at lightweight is better than Roberto Duran. You're talking all-time historical numbers. CompuBox went back and tallied Duran's fights at 135. Duran may be the most destructive force that the lightweight division ever saw. <laughs> you know, we're going we to bring Roberto Duran into the equation. we got to talk about the level of competition. That's and, right. In a football term, strength of schedule. It's not the same. But to your point, yes, Lopez is a power puncher. He can box. He does have an IQ. But Pete, the, the world is falling in love with him because of the knockout power. You think about the great lightweights. And we are going to listen. Somebody's going on the all-time list tonight because we've never had a four-belt undisputed lightweight weight champion but you look through the history of the division that we are going to discuss with Loma and Lopez and it is a pillar division in the history of the sport going back with guys like Henry Armstrong Ken Buchanan Duran Arguello Julio Cesar Chavez Pernell Whitaker greatness will be in front of us tonight with the winner middle of round five here Saucedo Barboza Let's go back at that big right hand that Barboza placed in that last round, Timmy. Beautiful setup right there. Blind him with the jab. Stuck it out there and then came right behind with the right hand. That's what the jab sets up. The jab occupies your opponent's eyes. You can blind him with that jab, and if you come around with the power, that's the cleanup crew. That's why it's important to land your jab first. You know, fellas, Barbosa told us in the meeting, I'm the bigger fighter, I think I'm the stronger fighter, and you're going to see a whole new me. Guess what? It's exactly what we have. It is, and because of it, it makes for a wildly entertaining fight. Pops that jab again against Saucedo. Barbosa right now is having a fight of his life. He's, he's boxing, boxing like he's possessed. He wants the championship, and he's here to impress tonight. He's here to get a knockout. He wants to knock out Salcedo. But what I like about Barboza tonight is, yes, he's fighting the fight of his life in terms of performance thus far, and he's fighting at a high pace, but he's fighting within himself. I don't get the sense that Salcedo is dictating the terms of this fight. You know, I noticed that every fight Salcedo's in, He's bleeding, and he's getting hit with solid shots like that. You know, when you get hit with those type of punches over and over in every single fight, it definitely shortens your career. Entertaining, but you're going to have a short career taking those type of punches. And once again, that fight will be on ESPN right here in the bubble. So here we have Lomachenko and Lopez saying, yeah, I'll fight in the bubble without fans. I won't. Don't worry about pay-per-view. Now you have Bud Crawford saying he's in, too. So you get to see Terrence Bud Crawford. We As we're going to get the break from Celestino Ruiz for the warning. Listen. You all right? Time, time, time. Time in. Ruiz offers the time to Barboza. He says, we fight on. Lomachenko is ESPN.com's number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. But those of us who vote for that, some of us sitting at this table, have Bud Crawford number one. Yeah, he's my number one. Um, you know, you mentioned him being, you know, cleaning out the 140-pound division. Uh, he's been a champion for a long time. Um, he's proven himself at, you know, every time he's 
have stepped up the competition, and he's typically gotten a knockout when he did it. So you got to respect that. You know, there's not a lot of champions that reign in this day and age, and he's certainly one of them. Good stuff here between Barboza and Saucedo. Total punches right now. Barboza leads 128 to 106 connected. Tim, your quick reaction to Bud Crawford putting his welterweight belt on the line against Kell Brook, signed to fight here in Vegas. Kell Brook, who had been a titleist, then went up to 160 pounds and fought Triple G, Gennady Golovkin, then came back down to 147 and got beat by Errol Spence. Now, recovering since those days and going up against the big guy, Bud Crawford, at 147. Well, he has experience. He has punching power. He has great timing. And I'm talking about Kell Brook. You know, we can't dismiss that he is a threat. You know, he might be a little bit watered down, like you just got to just saying, but he is a threat. It's the best available opponent for Terrence Bud Crawford. So that'll be November 14th. There's a left hand that comes in from Barboza. Then he switches back to the orthodox stance. Don't lean on him. Don't lean on him. This is a war. It really is. Muscling on the inside, shoulder to shoulder. Look to place the right uppercut moments ago. Now a wider right hand from Barboza. Barboza at 24 and 0, the 28-year-old from California. Ooh. Now those are shots right there that Salcedo need to continue to land down to the body of Barboza Jr. That will play. That was going to pay good dividends. Barboza answers though, just like he's supposed to, and that's been the story of the fight. This whole night between these two is that Salcedo has a moment and Barboza steals the play. If I'm in Salcedo's corner right now, I'm saying move your head side to side, come behind your jab, stay underneath your feet and dig down to the body. Keep hitting this man down to the body. We are at the end of six and Barboza has gone over 600 punches. Folks, we are four rounds away from Loma and Lopez in the super fight here in Vegas. But let me tell you what a show we are getting in the co-feature. Look at the total punches through six rounds. Barboza's over 100 punches a round. 146 of 611 thrown. Wow. Meanwhile, Andre Ward, who's been tallying his scorecard, has Barboza up 58-56 in a significant, very significant junior welterweight fight. Barboza's trying to stay undefeated, trying to stay towards a title shot. It's June 30th, and he had a unanimous decision win against Sonny Fredrickson. The winner will be in good shape in a division that's absolutely... He chased him back, and they're saying that's no knockdown. Saucedo was trying to track and trace Barboza, but it was a slip. <laughs> that was a knockdown. That was a knockdown. We, well, we will show the replays here. Now, keep in mind, here in the state of Nevada, they do have the new replay rule. They have the outside the ring review official who's in position to review things. The referee can also request instant replay review. So if they feel like, if Celestino Ruiz feels like he missed something, he can say, I want to take a look. Ruiz ruling that it was a slip. Ruiz felt that the legs got tangled up, that it was not a punch that caused Barboza to go down. You know, I've been very impressed with Barboza. His last outing and even tonight. And the question I had was, does he does he have that bite down in him, if need be? Yep. And thus far, he's shown that he has that element in his game as well. And so far, he's shown that he can take a good shot. He's took many tonight. He's also shown that he can fight me inside. He can also knows how to handle himself at mid-range. And he's great outside like he's doing right now. Dictating the pace of the fight, which is isolating the offense of Salcedo. Jab comes in that time from Saucedo. Right hand didn't come behind it. Final 30 seconds of round seven. Fighters like Saucedo who press forward like that, who are aggressive and don't mind taking punishment to get their own shots off, they're going to show you what you have on the inside of you. Well, earlier in this round, Tim Bradley, you said, that was a knockdown, that was a knockdown. Yeah. Celestino Ruiz said, no, a who has been the referee 
for so many world championship fights. So, the new Nevada State rule, there's Joe Cortez. Let's listen in. Okay, okay, sorry, okay, okay, okay. Stay there, stay there. That was rule and knockdown from a further review. There it is. It works, and isn't that great news when we have the big fight? Let's call a knockdown from the further review, okay? It's not a slip. So score the knockdown for score Alex knockdown. Saucedo. Well done, Tim Bradley. Score the knockdown. Listen to me. Score the knockdown. He threw a wild shot, got himself off balance. Time in. Take yourself at all times. And by the way, for everybody who spent the entire day watching college football and getting angry at the TV as it takes three minutes and five minutes and six minutes for review, <laughs> boxing just did it in about 10 seconds after the round. Wonderful. Yellow lights on. Hey, guys, looked like a knockdown. Let's rule the knockdown. Well done by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Yes. Joe Cortez in the new position that was just put in. Yellow light gets on. We get the right call. <laughs> That was a mean combination right there from Barbosa. He landed a body shot earlier in the round, then came back with a three-piece right there and landed every single shot. Now, significant, Dre, when we looked at your scorecard earlier and when you look at CompuBox and the work rate of Barbosa, that Saucedo just banked a 10-8 round. Yes, he did. Right call by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Round number eight, scheduled for 10, critical fight for both of these men at this stage of their careers. Oof. And then it is Lomachenko and Lopez, winner take all. The mistake that Salcedo's making, stand directly in front, taking all those punches. You know what, if you want to hit something, hit the body. The head's going to move, but the body's going to stay still. This is live from the locker room of Vasily Lomachenko. Vasily Lomachenko, who is the betting favorite here in Vegas. There was a tick down in the odds. There was a lot of money that was coming in on Lopez, and then some big bets came in on Lomachenko. And there is Tiafimo Lopez right now live in his locker room. His father is his trainer. He's only 23 years old. He just won a title last December at Madison Square Garden with that dynamic, I mean unbelievably dynamic second round knockout of Richard Comey. And instead of saying, hey, I'll do a nice little title defense right. against a softer touch. No. Midst of the pandemic, he wants it all. He wants Lomachenko. Test fighters that want to be great, they step up to the plate. Lopez wants to be great. Legendary status. Not just a champion. We will find out just how great he can be because he is taking on the biggest challenge in the sport. The ultra-skilled Lomachenko is the target to try to deliver all that power of the right hand of Lopez tonight. That is coming up in moments at the conclusion of this co-feature. What a good fight it has been. 176 punches landed by Barboza, 151 landed by Saucedo. Saucedo had the knockdown scored in the last round. Can somebody tell Salcedo to move his head, please? <laughs> Jeez, Louise. He, you know, he has no defense in the transition. He lets his hands go, and then he stands right there and takes two, three, four, five, six punches from him. What has been an entertaining co-feature. Six minutes to go before we get to the undisputed lightweight championship of the world. But how will this play out between Sauceda and Barboza? Speaking of Lomachenko and Lopez, there has been a little bit of a downtick with the odds. Let's show you the updated odds for the mega fight. Lomachenko took in money, was tracking north earlier today, and now the updated odds have more money coming in on Lopez late. So it goes from minus 420 to now minus 400 for Loma. The over-under in total rounds is still 10 and a half. As we've told you, those casino managers we have spoken with say the public loves Tiafimo. It's the Sharps that are lining up on Loma. There's a ticket count of 4-1 in favor of Lopez, but it's the big bets coming in on Lomachenko. And now you can see Tiafimo Lopez, who was dancing and loose earlier, locking in. This guy is always locked in. Vasily Lomachenko. The Ukrainian fighter who comes to California to train his last fight had all of us over in London 
And now coming off the longest layoff of his career, he will put his belts on the line and try to conquer and take Lopez's as well. It's tough for a guy like Salcedo because he's tough, he's durable, and he's resilient, but he doesn't have a lot of different elements to his game, so when he's facing a superior boxer like this, he doesn't really have the fighting smarter in his back pocket element. He's got to fight harder if he's going to do anything to Barboza or try to slow him down. A lot better career choice to fight smarter. There's a right hand from Barboza. Quickness, movement, beautiful adjustment for Barboza. I thought he was going to fight the entire fight this way. He stood his ground when he had to, wore down Salcedo. Now he's using the movement to create his offense. He does have a 10-8 round in the ledger against him. Keep that in mind. Seventh round was a knockdown scored by Salcedo. <laughs> Barboza Jr. is a real threat for anyone if he comes out of this fight, a winner. Stop, 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 stop. Hey. He has it all. He has it all, Dre. Yeah. He does. See, Salcedo just tried to cock a punch back, and he wasn't able to hit Barboza, and he gets countered with shots like that. That hurt him. He was hurt right there. Can't telegraph punches against a faster man. Just got to let those hands fly from where they are. <laughs> Tenth tier. Oh. Right hand from Barboza. Tried to place another one and time it against Saucedo. After this, it is time to get Lomachenko and Lopez in position for the ring walk. Snapping jab with that left hand. Back to it. Barboza trying to stay perfect, trying to move his mark to 25 and 0. Stop! Give both guys credit for taking this fight. You gotta have these kind of opponents opposite you to take a step forward. And right from the start, they delivered. Opening round, remember Barboza came out through 95 punches. Salcedo trying to get that right hand over the top. Barboza in that neutral corner before he ties up. I give both fighters even more credit because this is the kind of fight that they said they were going to fight. And they kept their word. They're delivering on the promise, and we don't see a lot of that in boxing. If, if, if fights could be won or lost in our fighter meetings, the landscape of boxing would look a whole lot different. Opened up with a left hook right there. Salcedo with an opportunity for offense, and he filled it, and now trying to wrap around with a right hand. Barboza lands a right hand of his own. Here's the other thing these two are doing, Tim. They're doing it on a big stage with a lot of mainstream sports fans. If you're going to fight in the moments before Lomachenko and Lopez, you may as well bring it. You may as well establish yourself as something. And that's exactly what Barboza Jr. is doing right now. Like I said, he's going to be a nightmare. He finished this fight. We still got a minute, minute and ten left. He finished this fight. And he wins this fight. He's going to be a problem for anybody in his division. He's showing me this tonight. Look at it. He's still bouncing around. How many punches have they thrown, Tess? How, I, it got to be well over 800 punches. My goodness. <laughs> You know, one thing that Barboza has, same thing we're going to see from Lopez and Loma in our main event. It's timing. It's got oh. great, great timing. We're going to have a big discussion about timing. When we analyze Lopez and Lomachenko, it's going to be all about timing. Lopez has power, but he delivers it by way of timing. Here we go. Final clap here in Vegas for two guys who have given a lot tonight. Now we have Loma and Loma, Lomachenko and Lopez. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside MGM Grand, after 10 rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Dave Moretti has the bout 96-93.
Max DeLuca and Patricia Morse Jarman both score the bout 97 92. All in favor for your winner by unanimous decision. And now the WBO Junior Welterweight International Champion, Arnold Barbosa Jr.